All right, so families of quadratics are a whole bunch of quadratics that have the exact same roots. So whenever something is a family, it's said to have the same roots. It can have a different A value, but it's going to have the same roots. Now, that doesn't mean that it has to open in the same direction. It doesn't mean that it's obviously not going to have the same stretch or compression. It doesn't have the same vertex, but the roots have to be the same. So when we're looking at this, what we have to remember is all of these different things that we've talked about. Now... One thing that we haven't really stressed is that a different way to find the x value or the equation of this axis of symmetry, the x value of your vertex, is just by doing negative b over 2a. Um, after that, you can find the y value by subbing that x value into your equation. Obviously, we've got our normal form of a quadratic, so a minus or x minus h squared plus q, where we're going to have, and that would be a Let's call this K. Let's not use two different letters here. Where H and K are our vertex. Um, the equation is in factored form. We can find our two X uh, intercepts, add them together, divide by two to find the axis of symmetry and kind of work through it that way. Based on different information, you're going to start different ways. You're going to either use factored form, vertex form, and sometimes you actually have to use standard form, which is a real pain, but that would be... Um, if you're given the x-intercepts, you'll use factored form. If you're given the vertex, you'd use vertex form. If you're not given any of that information, you unfortunately have to use standard form. And it is kind of a pain, but you can do it by setting up a couple systems of equations and kind of working through it that way. So first, let's just look at this first one. This one's a nice and easy setup. It's got the zeros given there, and it says, find the equation of the parabola that has the y-intercept of... 0 and negative 16. So what we're looking at here is we know we've got f at x equals, and we're given the two zeros and we're given the x-intercept. Remember, if we're given the two zeros, we want to start with factored form. So what we're going to have is a, and then we want to put our two zeros in. So we've got x plus 2 and x minus 4. Now, it also then tells us our y-intercept. Well, then that's allowing us to sub in for f of x and x in this equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to sub in negative 16 for our y value, or f of x, and 0 for our x value. So we get 0 plus 2, which is 2. We get 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. Then we get negative 16, a times negative 8, a is equal to 2. So therefore, the equation is f at x equals 2, x plus 2, x minus 4. Now, it just says find the equation of the parabola. It doesn't say find it in standard form, put it in vertex form. This is the equation because that's all the question's asking for. Don't do more than the question's asking. Right, we're going to solve the next one in a similar way. We're just going to set up our equation. We still have those same two zeros. So we still need to find the a value. Do it in purple for some reason this time. But this time we actually have an x. So it's going to make it a little bit harder just because the math is a little harder. But it's not really going to change anything that we actually do here. So we're going to have, what is that? Um, oh, did I get ahead of myself here? That's going to be um, 1, so that's minus 3. So then that's going to be negative 8 over negative 9, which is just 8 over 9. So therefore, we have f at x equals 8 over 9, x plus 2 x minus 4. Okay, those ones are pretty straightforward. There is little tricks to them, but all we're doing is subbing in our x's and y's for f at x and x. Okay, so quadratics with the same zeros are said to be in the same family. There are infinite number of quadratic functions in every family. So as long as a is a real number, anything other than 0, because 0 would create just a linear line, we would have f at x equals a, then x plus 2, x minus 4. Our two intercepts are the same. We have infinite number of a values. It just can't equal to 0. So 
So looking at the next equation, so we this one we have vertex. Okay, so we're going to set it up the exact same. We're going to put it in vertex form. This one, however, says find the equation of the function in standard form. So we have to do a little bit more work afterward. So first, we're going to set up our equation in vertex form. So we've got a vertex of 6, 3. So now that equation would have a vertex of 6, 3. Let's make it squared. Now we're just subbing in our y value and our x value. So negative 15 equals a negative 6 squared plus 3. Right. Okay, well, I'm going to move the 3 over now. I've got a negative 18 equals a times 36. So a equals negative 1 half. All right, with that, we can sub back into our equation. So we're going to get f at x equals negative 1 half. We get um, x squared minus 12x plus 36 plus 3. Just expanded out our x minus 6 squared there. So we get negative one half x squared plus six x and now i'm going to half that 36 and divide it by two so we're going to get negative 18 plus three is going to be negative 15. so now we're in standard form we've got our equation and we're all done okay we've kind of skipped a couple steps there but you get the idea now this last one is the one that I said is a little bit unfortunate because we've got three separate equations. Now the way I'm going to set it up is we're going to have an ABC, but we're going to have 9 equals A. Now our X is negative 2. You're going to kind of see where I'm going here. Negative 2 squared plus B times negative 2 plus C. So then we're going to be left with 9 equals 4a minus 2b plus c. That's our first equation. Okay, our second equation. And I'm going to start writing a little bit smaller here. I'm going to do the same thing. So we've used that one. I'm going to do the same thing with the second one. But I'm going to kind of do it all in one line here. We're going to have negative 7 equals 2 squared is 4 again. So we get 4a and then plus 2b plus c. That's equation 2. And then the last one is going to be 3 equals 16a. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 4b plus c. And that's going to be equation 3. Okay, so we've got three equations set up. Okay, now I'm going to, I could do my work right where those equations are. I'm going to rewrite them after, kind of go through what I can do. What I'm really looking for here, are these two equations have a lot to do with one another. It doesn't always work out this nicely. Sometimes you have to do put two and one together and then put two and three together and then put those equations together to solve for variables. Um, in this one, it seems to be, it's gonna work out a little bit nicer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one minus two, okay? Because that way I can just write two right below here. So this again is equation two. So we're gonna have four a plus two b plus c. Now I'm going to do 1 minus 2. So 9 minus negative 7 is going to give me 16. 4 minus 4 is 0. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And c minus c is 0. So all I'm left with is the b terms. Okay, so those ones are nice and easy. So then I can do um, b equals negative four. All right, so that one's helped me out quite a bit. All right, let's work on two and 
3 now. Because we want to get rid of b. Now we've actually solved for b. Um, we could sub it in because we know what it is. But we don't want to really use it. So um, why don't we use 2 and 3 and see if we can solve for something there. All right. So, well, if we... Actually, let's use 1 and 2 again. So we'll have 1. We have 9 equals 4a minus 2b plus c. And 2, we have negative 7 equals 4a plus 2b plus c. Now, this is where you're going to kind of see we're going to do 1 plus 2. We're adding them here. You're going to see that we're going to get a little bit of kind of a bad situation here. Because now we've got an equation that doesn't have, or it's got too many variables in it. But we can actually solve for c here. We can divide everything by 2. And get, or we can do something like this. We can go 2 minus 8a equals c, or 2c. And then from that, and I know I'm getting way down here, 1 minus 4a equals c. So from equation 3, I'm going to take equation 3, and I'm going to sub in b equals negative 4, c equals 1 minus 4a. I'm going to sub both of those into 3. Okay, because I haven't used equation 3 yet, and I want to make sure that I am using all of the equations. Um, I don't want to sub back into an equation I've already used to find that c term. It's just going to prove to me the same thing. So we're going to have 3 equals 16a plus... 4 times negative 4 plus 1 minus 4a. Okay, and that's a bracket. So we're going to get 3 equals 16 minus 4 is 12a. And I'm going to just go like this. So 12a minus 16 plus 1 is minus 15. Okay, uh, yeah, looks good so far. And then we're going to move that 15 to the other side. We're going to get 18 equals 12a. Divide them both by 6. You can get 3 equals 2a. a equals 3 over 2, or 1.5. And then c, I'm going to sub that into c. So sub into, oh, that's all one word. So let's make that a little clearer. Sub into C. So then we've got C equals 1 minus 4 times, I'm going to just make it 1.5. So that's going to be 1 minus 4 times 1.5 is 6. So that's negative 5. So therefore, here's our a value. I'm going to, let's go to blue. Our a value is here. Our c value is here. And our b value is right there. So then therefore, f of x equals 3 over 2, or 1.5, x squared minus 4x minus 4. Five is our equation. All right, that's a little bit of a pain. Um, it was nice because some of the numbers in the equations worked out. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you have to multiply or add or rearrange the equations um, to figure this stuff out. They are hard when you're doing them, but the math is always there. There's a worksheet for that.